So you pretty much just bought this and now you're like, how the hell do I use this thing? How's it going? My name's Peter and you're watching Broke Visionary. And in my first video review of this newer 24 inch 60 centimeter handheld stabilizer, I got a couple of comments, well exactly two, saying it took me two hours to figure out how to stabilize this thing. It took me, I still don't know how to stabilize this. Well, you come to the right video. Cause in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I stabilize this newer Steadicam, Glidecam, whatever you wanna call it. Cause initially when I first got it, it was a little bit frustrating. And truth be told is, it is still a little frustrating if you don't have it on the proper settings and how you stabilize this. When you buy this thing, it comes with two more weights here, these weight stacks. They pretty much look like this right here. But truth is, if you're using something like a DSLR, you don't need all of the weights on here because that will be just too heavy. So for me, what I do is I only use one of the plates on here for each side. And what I also do is for the back end, I have one piece specifically stick out more. Another one more aligned with the base plate itself. And that is where the front of my Steadicam is. So if you see it, it's like this. And I have one sticking on the back like that. This knob essentially adjusts the length of it. And the heavier camera is, and if you have all the weights on, you might want to have it a little long. But if you're using anything like a DSLR, and I specifically use this Nikon D5200, I pretty much have it pretty damn close to all the way up. And it's literally, I have like an inch. So pretty much once you have that properly balanced, what you're looking for is you have your camera here on top of it and the, once you have it like that you hold it parallel and you let it drop and it should drop anywhere from one to two and a half seconds if it drops way too quick then your bottom plate is way too heavy so you either need to remove the plates or make the length of the pole itself a little shorter step two when it comes to using this is what you need to do balance next is the trickier part, which is the top base plate. And uh, for demonstration purposes, I can't use this camera that I'm using now, but imagine there was your DSLR on here, okay? So once you have your DSL on here, there's two knobs that you need to worry about. This knob here, which pretty much adjusts your front and the back position of the camera and this knob behind here, which adjusts how it is from the left and right. And here's the part where you need some patience. So what you need to do is you put the camera down on a flat surface, and then you pick it up. Simple, right? And what you're looking for is you pick it up and you look at which way does it lean. So for example, you pick it up and you see it that it's leaning way too much to the right. So what you do is you want to adjust this back here and way too much to the right means all you do is you push it more to the right. I mean left. You're pretty much pushing what the opposite way so it bounces up. So if it's leaning too much to the left, you push it more to the right. And you want to do it so eventually is you'll pick it up and then it seems to just stay in its spot. And once you have it balanced so it doesn't swing so much to the left to the right, then you're going to need to balance it so it doesn't swing forward and back. So you do the same thing again. You pick it up and you see that it's leaning a way too much forward. So you unjust the side knob here and you wanna push this base plate, your camera would be facing this way, and you wanna push it more back. 
and then you tie in this. So if essentially what you're looking for is you're picking it up so that it is stable. And those are the two main steps and tutorial on how you stabilize this thing. And yes, I know it does get a little frustrating, but once you get the hang of it and you see that the shots that you're producing for this amount of budget, you will be amazed. And of course, once you have it properly balanced, you can move it around like this and show all your friends and it'll look something like this once it's almost completely stabilized. And that folks and that is how you stabilize this stabilizer it takes a little practice but once you have the proper settings and you adjust it right according to your camera then it should only take you around two to five minutes at max when it comes to having that perfect tracking shot moving shot that you want for a budget friendly price and if you haven't seen my review yet I'll leave that in the description and it's pretty much the bang for its buck. You're spending here $100 versus $500 like a Gladcam HD, or you're saving yourself even two to $3,000 if you decide to spend something like the DJI Ronin, which is a completely electronic gimbal and professional level. If you have the budget to actually spend that much amount of money on a stabilizer go ahead and use it it's something that i would recommend but if you're more on the entry level and you're more of a hobbyist or you're more of like a small or business video production type of person then i would definitely recommend this newer 24 inch 60 centimeter glide cam and you, you're pretty much not going to get a better bargain for this. And I've produced some amazing shots with this here. And yes, I know it does get a little frustrating, but hopefully this little tutorial helps someone out there because it took me a little while to get it. But once I got it, that is where those buttery shots come in. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.